Another way to select color or to choose color to be used in your projects in Photoshop is to use the eyedropper tool. There's actually a couple different eyedroppers and are, are eyedroppers that exist in other um, tools. And so we're going to talk about the eyedropper as a tool. But I want to note that even when you're inside like the picker, when you're choosing the color, you're choosing it with an eyedropper. And so the same things we say about this eyedropper apply to all eyedropper tools whenever you see an eyedropper. So the eyedropper tool can be used to sample color from an image. So an image that you have open separately than your current document or even within your, your document. Uh, what you sample will be selected for the foreground or the background color depending on modifier keys that you have selected. We're just going to worry about selecting color for the foreground in Art 1280. To use it, you'll choose the eyedropper tool from the tools panel and you can see that I have it selected here on the left hand side. Uh, you can then make choices along the options bar at the top of your screen. You don't really have to choose anything, but you can tell it to show the sampling ring, and you can see here it's showing you where it's choosing the color from within. You can tell it what to sample, sample all layers. If you have separated all the elements of your project onto different layers and you don't tell it to select all layers, it will allow you to just select what you're currently selected on. And then you can choose the sample size of what to how what area to make your, your choice from. In addition, if you right click on your screen, you can copy the color's hex code. And so if you know you're working on the web and you need the hexadecimal code to input on your coding for your website, you can get the code that way. But we also know that if you select the color with the eyedropper tool and then you launch the foreground color color picker, it will tell you inside there what the hex code is. Once a color has been selected via the eyedropper tool, it can then be applied to your artwork, and so you can paint with it, you can fill with it, etc. The eyedropper is available via the tools panel as illustrated in the previous slide, and also within various Photoshop tools and actions that require the use of color or the selection of color. Whenever you see a color picker, consider moving your cursor outside the bounds of whatever dialog box you're working within onto your active image area. You'll notice any color you click with will become the color the eyedropper chooses. Um, so I just brought up one example here, and it's a color range command, which we should already know about because we did for the previous lecture to change a color of like tulips, I think we did. This is shown in the example provided when the purple flowers are clicked with the eyedropper. And so I launched the color range uh, selection option. And so that's the select menu and then color range. It launches this dialog box over here and it allows you to select a range of colors. And you have the ability to sample colors with an eyedropper and you can see you can add and, and remove from your eyedropper selection. And by default, you're gonna click inside this black area and kind of blindly select the color in the image. And so if you wanted to select the blue area of the boat, you could select it inside the little black blob on the color range um, panel, but you're kind of hoping that you click the right area. You can take the eyedropper that you're using and leave the dialog box and come over here to your actual image and actually click on the area of the image that you would like to, to work with. In this case, I just clicked the purple flowers and you can see all the different purple shades that were related to the color I chose have now been selected and if I selected OK, they would become an active selection with a marching ant marquee. And so this is just one example, but anytime you have inside a box and you see a little dropper tool, consider just going beyond the bounds of your dialog box, even though it doesn't say to do that. Um, you can always go beyond the bounds and see if you can click on the picture, and I would say nine times out of ten you can do so. In addition to the eyedropper tool, you may want to consider with how consider when working with color how the color that you apply will be a will affect the colors around it or will work with the colors. Blending modes control how pixels in an image are affected by a painting or an editing tool. Blending modes will have an effect on the color that you see and how the color you apply um, appears on the page. To visualize these effects, it helps to break down the color. And so you're going to think of the color in three ways. You're going to have your base color, which is the original color in the image. Then you're going to have your blend color, and it's a color being applied with the painting. And so maybe you have a blue background and you're painting with red. And then you're going to end up with a result, and the resulting color will be how the two colors interacted with each other. And you never know what that's going to be because the different blending modes create different effects. And you can see this is the same image, and I've painted, or we've painted with the same color. It's not a different color, I just painted with the same exact color.
it's both red and you can see that on the little tools icon. But on the left hand side before I use my paintbrush I said that as I paint I want to paint with the blending mode that's called exclusion and it created that effect. On the right hand side before I painted I said I want to paint with the overlay effect and it gave me the option on the right hand side. You can also do this by using non-destructive editing. And so this example, I literally painted right on top of the image with, um, let's say with ink, right? I'm painting on top of it with paint. You can also do it by using layers, and this is how I would recommend doing it. And so you could do it with that same exact image using separate layers. This is just another example. And you can see in this example, I have a background image and I created an empty layer on the top. And it's my intention to paint over the flowers with purple and then change the blending mode so that the purple will interact with the flowers in various ways. Blending modes can be found on the layers panel and also in various Photoshop actions. For example, you can change your paintbrush to have a blending mode of exclusion or overlay, etc. Each blending mode will produce a different effect. In this example, I'm going to paint with purple on the new layer, layer one and then I'm going to change the blending mode on the layers panel and you can see right here let me zoom in this normal drop down are the layer blending modes. so blending modes don't have to apply to layers but in this case I'm applying it to a layer so it is a layer blending mode and I am going to use this normal drop down you can see right here it says normal and then all the different options that are available to me I can click through them and because I am putting my changes on a separate layer I can try a lot of different options one after another if I paint directly onto the layer like I did in the first example, I have to know what I want to do first before I start painting because you cannot undo it after you've done it. And so you can see here that I took a paintbrush and I just painted over the area on the layer where the, the flowers were. And after I was done, I changed the layer blending mode in this case to color. And you can see it kind of colorizes the, the flowers. This one is exclusion, which creates kind of a cool funky effect and this is my overlay option and so every blending mode is going to give a different effect and none neither or none are right or wrong it just is a different effect and what I would recommend is kinda click through and play around and see what you like but then as you create cool effects that you really like write them down um, because you're, you may want to create them again in the future